Hello, everyone. Welcome to our class on Benlac. This is Educ 3, Building and Enhancing New Literacies Across the Curriculum. So we now proceed to the second half of our semester. And this is now Unit 5. So connecting all of these together, if you recall, in the previous meetings that we had, Prior to the midterm examinations, we were able to tackle four important literacies that a pre-service teacher would need to uh, be a master of. If you recall this, the first one is the multicultural literacy, followed by social literacy, media literacy, and our very important as well, financial literacy. Now, moving to Unit 5, we now talk about cyber and digital literacy. This is something very, very important. You see, we now embrace the digital world, no matter how much we try to say that uh, we are still in the, we are in the third world country and a lot of other things, but we cannot escape the fact that things are gone or things have gone digital. So it is very important for pre-service teachers like you and even teachers who are already in the, in the service to really be made aware that there are important elements and components and that we need to be literate. Okay, there, this is a quote from George Lucas and I would like to springboard our discussion from this quotation. He said, if people aren't taught the language of sound and images, shouldn't they be considered as illiterate, as if they left college without being able to read and write? You know, when do we say that a person is literate? Long, long time ago, we say that you are literate if you know how to read and write. True, but things have already changed. We are becoming modern. The world is, is becoming digital, and there is a global, uh, globalization is already here. So one way to really be able to embrace the changes that we have is to adapt. And when we adapt, we need to learn. And so it is important that we become literate, in not just in terms of reading and writing, but as well as into the listening, into the analyzing of the visuals, and even in the way we, we look into things, like how critical are we in looking at the information that are provided to us. Now, literacy in the 21st century is more than being able to read and write. With the reality of diver diverse cultures and various forms of media and technologies, one has to possess specific capabilities needed, not just in the world of work, but also in the attainment of a functional individual in the community. Over the years, we have witnessed how technology has shifted, the way young people learn. While it is true that students nowadays are immersed in the digital world, it is crucial to delve into their capability to weigh, interpret, and critically evaluate any form from the digital environment. Hence, digital literacy is more than just the mechanical ability to use digital devices, for it entails a variety of complex cognitive skills. It is not just about using the computer and surfing the internet, but rather it is an understanding of the kind of online information one has. So suffice to say, it is basically looking into what is this information should I believe this information? And not just that, it's also making use of the many, many very helpful tools that we can use via the digital world in our teaching and learning. So there's so much more. By the same token, cyber literacy, also known as digital literacy to others, 
is a stable set of skills that permit us or permits us to function productively in the digital environment. It is the literacy needed in using, evaluating, and creating data and images. Thoman and Jolis, okay, and Hochstrasser purported that through the use of data and graphics, the language of the eye and the language of the mind are enabled to connect and collaborate to make meaning, to create, to co-create stories. Indeed, the multifaceted nature of cyber and digital literacy provides us an avenue to better understand our role and that of others in everything that we view. Henceforth, it has not been made more essential among students and the college graduates of in, or, I mean the college graduates of the 21st century. It is in this context that prospective teachers like you or you are called pre-service teachers, you are taught of the value and skills of a digital literate person in the 21st century. Okay. So there's so many things that is being said in this slide. Now, first of all, it is about using the digital uh, capacity that we have now, have, uh, knowing that we are in the 21st century and that we are looking into ways to really collaborate with others and making use of the technology that we have. But what is really digital literacy? Let us look at this video. You've heard that at uni, you need to have skills in something called digital literacy. And you thought, what? If that's you, don't worry. The library can help you understand. So you're already searching and navigating every day through all types of information. You make choices based on what you find out. And you're also sharing it socially using a variety of tools. Let's pretend you want to book a trip overseas. Ah, a holiday. What do you need to know? Well, you might research things like accommodation, weather, food and culture, coffee, the best of course, and you'll make travel plans based on what you find out. You might even create an itinerary online and share it with your family. Now, you just need to make sure you know how to use these digital literacy skills in a similar way to be successful at uni, and we all want that. Digital literacy is one of eight Deakin graduate learning outcomes, a core set of skills you'll get as a Deakin student. Digital literacy is all about using technologies confidently as you live, learn, and work in a challenging digital world. But it's more than that. Being a digitally literate student means having capabilities in five connected areas. You need to be able to search, navigate, and locate information in digital environments. After finding your information, it's time to evaluate, analyze, and apply your critical thinking skills to check, is this relevant to my research needs? A digitally literate student would then organize, manage, and curate the information they've found. This just means sorting and storing it in a way that makes it easier to use. Another important digital literacy skill is being able to create, construct, and generate digital artifacts and your digital identity. Things like developing an online presentation, making a video about your research area, or writing and editing an assignment. Part of being a student in a digital world also requires the ability to communicate, connect and collaborate with others to share information or to be involved in group projects. You need to do all of this using a variety of technologies and not just technology of today, but with new things too, so that you are always adapting and changing. Being flexible and capable in digital literacy is a great thing. It's key to your success both at uni and in your future career and Deakin can help you get there. All right, let me just connect my... Okay, so it's actually a, a video, no, it's, um, 
it's like an advertisement of this university, but what I like about the presentation is the very, very simple explanation of digital literacy. And I'd like to begin with the example that was given, like you wanted to go and travel somewhere. What do you usually do? Akuno every night, um, if I may just share, one of the things nga makapa excite good nako. Laing kayo matug na kababat makapa excite gihapon. So every time I go to sleep na good, I look into my my cell phone, my browse pa man tagi nagmayno sa Facebook and etc. And one of the things that would really um, ako yung maklik good sa Google, for example, is or is even sa kung Facebook. I am a member of Sugbo. .ph. So it's like a website, Banunga. There are so many things, Pagidei, so many other places, Pagidei, that we can that we can travel in Cebu. Okay, number one, I think I have shared this with you. I'm really, really fond of kana na ang traveling. Kanahan siya kayo magsuri-suri, kanang mag, mag-larga-larga. And then pre-pandemic period, murag monthly good ko nag, naglakaw. So monthly. And then, um, it is because I join research conferences, so I travel. No mo apil ko mga mga seminars before. Ingon ana niya. Um, apil na put sa seminars nga kung adto on is of course ang ang atul aglaag did to looking into places, traveling, um, trying out their food. Unsa pa na mga lain diha mga tourist attractions, mga picture here and picture there, no? So one of the things good nga nakapa ko anako nakapa amazing. Is nako is during excuse, excuse me during the kaning ECQ na no, lockdown na tano lockdown na ang kanya wala na gitay larga larga almost one year na ta no we are already a, a year old na gitay ni ato ang pandemic and so na stuck up ko sa house and uh, what do I do nagsigi ko gihimog lista na lang kyo of the beautiful places pagiday in Cebu nga pwede pagiday na itong adtoon like di ba we don't really need to go right now to different places kaya listen pa biya kayo but here in Cebu that kan pa kayo and one of the websites that I go to is the sugbo.ph so wala ko nag-advertise niya but I'm just um, sharing with you nga Looking into some websites nga nakapa, makapa excite na to, and we know how to navigate uh, through these websites and the information that they are offering is one of the evidences that one is digitally literate or uh, in the cyber world, ba, in, in the world of the internet, kamautag unsaon. Now, many people, na agi ubay ubay pag ini sila nga. Mga gud, hala unsa on man na kanong mahadlok bitaw mo tuplok tuplok og laptop sa internet mo book sa ilang hotel over the internet mo bayad via internet. Na pa gud na sila. But we cannot also judge them that hala oy mga batikid na sila mga tawhanan. No. They just need to be educated some more. They just need exposure some more so that they can immerse themselves into the the digital world. Because you know, in just one click, gabi paspas kayo. Like example, I don't know if one of you here is from Alcoy. Na koy nakit-an nga nindot kay siya nga murag resort sa Alcoy no Voda. Sa to, eh, nal- nalimot ko, Voda Crush na or something. And then I told my husband, Uy, inig ka May ba? Birthday man ako, May 17. And then, ganahan ko mag-mag-mag-kuanta, mag-mag-mag-mag, ano sa tawag, mag-hotel, mag-resort ta ba? Beach resort this time. Kaya, sige naman tala mga swimming pool, swimming pool. But I want the salt, ananana. Siya, sige, pag-book. So, pas-pas din kayo, naka-book da yun ko. And then, nakabayad da yun ko without even going out of the house. So I already booked rooms for us. Unya naka na ako nang gibasa yung mga reviews and everything. So even in just the tip of your fingernail, so you, even the tip of you know, the tip of your finger, the your your fingertips, kuno, you can do magic. So if you are digitally literate or you are learning to be and embracing to be. So wana shang iyangi pasabot sa digital literacy. Additional to that, it is a life skill. It is a life skill competence needed for survival in the world of computers. So gone are the days when hardok cukup menggunakan itu computer. Oi, di mana kau mau diri nata anak dia diri nata anak ngah mengah thinking because this is now the world of the internet.
It calls for one's awareness of computers and Internet's promises and perils. It is more than just the technical adeptness on the house to operate digital devices. So it's just more than operation. It entails an interweaving of cognitive skills and sense of responsibility in order to execute tasks in the digital world. This ta uh, these tasks, including but not limited to browsing the internet, deciphering users' interfaces, working with databases, and chatting in chat rooms. So um, it's not just the it's not just using, knowing how to click, where to click, but it's more into internalizing. Why do you need to go in that website? Why do you need to, to look for this and that? Huh? In other words, digital literacy is, uh, or covers specific skills and competences to general awareness and ethical viewpoints. Hence, there is a need to know what are the key terms and concepts associated with digital literacy? Now, there is this elements of digital literacy. Kami nga tag, mam, uy, kanang, di man ka na siya kutub lang sa pagtuplok-tuplok, dili. Uh, it's more than that tuplok-tuplok and knowing where to go and, and, um, sa to, ang giingon ganina, no, where to go and how to, to, to navigate. Now, Joe Belshaw in 2004 presented the eight elements of digital literacy. So he provided a holistic approach to digital literacy where knowing how to use technology is just one of the eight elements. Diba na yung Dili ragyud ang knowing the use of technology. Daghan check elements. Daghan daig possible pag yun daig nga. Maka yung tag digitally literate ang tao. Not just knowing how to use the technology. So here, presented in this slide, he emphasized that the elements are descriptive rather than prescriptive and are appropriate for improving the digital literacy fluency of both digital novices and advanced learners. Okay, so in our Google Classroom, I'll share with you the website where I got this one. So looking into the table, we see in column one the elements and then in column two here the descriptions. So let's look at each um, very, very uh, carefully. So the first element is cultural. It, it has something to do with how we behave or how to behave, meaning understanding the culture of the internet and digital environment. Meaning to say, kung kamauta sa culture sa internet, kamauta sa language to use, for example, um, may nung tag ka na, na ang mag-email ka, for example. When you email, mutangan man mo no, from, from kinsa to kinsa, the subject. So, you must understand, ang culture in the internet is that in the subject, imang ibutang din ha, ang pinaka-importante nga topic of your email. You don't write the whole, you don't write the sentence subject. So that is knowing the culture. No? How do we behave? And then, for example, in the email, you don't put all capital letters in your message. Dear Dr. Mananay, I am very sorry, you're all capital. So that is how you behave in the internet. Meaning to say, wala day kakabaw, nga dili day pwede capital tanan. Because if you Use all caps. What is that? What does that mean? Unsa may pasabot anang all capital letters? You are like screaming to the person, no? Okay. Second is it has something to do with cognitive. It is how to do. You incorporate what we know as of computer literacy or IT skills with an understanding of the key concepts. So kabaw ka. Uh, nga, mo, mo click ka aning dapita, masend na na dito imuhang email, o dili ka mo click, di gina niya ma-receive. No? Very simple as that. Constructive, how to use. Knowing what it means to construct something in the digital environment, how content can be appropriate, reused, and remixed. So, it has something to do with the construction. It has something to do with making meaning and giving meaning of whatever it is that you want to do using the digital technology. Next is communicative. How to communicate? 
So, medyo related po na siya, no? Sa, um, actually, all of these are intertwining. But can I get siyang communicative, how to communicate in the digital environment? We know nga, in the email, it is a bit formal, di ba? And then in the messenger, medyo pwede rata mag, mag-use og mga shortcut terms, like... Um, TY, meaning thank you. No, but in the email, marag more into formality ginasya. Now, how to belong? Confident ka how to belong? Understanding and capitalizing upon the ways in which the online world differs from the offline world. So, reflecting on one's learning in the digital spaces and bigger part of the online community. For example, you are conducting an online class. Kay karon ba no? With the pandemic, daghan kay schools naka realize nga pwede naman di ay online ang classes so we don't need a physical classroom and learning can still occur and diplomas can still be given so for example connecting that to this particular element on the uh, on on knowing how to belong so nagteach na ko ron for example ako karon nag nag, nag istorya ko ninyo and then uh, granting that we're having a synchronous virtual class, pwede na yung ko mo accept nga inyong i-off inyong hang camera. Kaya nga naman, uh, maybe there is something that um, dili pa kayo comfortable to share. Ay mo habang background, nga mo rin na yung manok. Or for example, wala pa ka, 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 kaligo kay, uh, sa'yo kay atong class. So, nata yung mga respect of digital spaces. No? And then, also, kanang mobilong kag mga fora. Asa man ka nga mga group gidganahan mo belong to in terms of online communities. Musood ba kag mga groups that talk about mga K-drama? Ako lately, nisood ko anak karun kay nalingaw kay ko anong mga K-drama with, with the time nga kanina ang nagkuanta ba, nagdakantag mga vacation, and then natin mga holidays. So, I usually uh, go to mga K-drama sites and makalearn sa kugdaghan dito. So, depending where do you want to belong to, you then you click and add yourself to the fora or to the forum. Creativity. So, how to make? Parihara po siya or greatly related to construction. Na? So, creating new things which add value where the focus is more on the value created than the act of creating something new. So, on to my um, example to this. For example, you are creating some vlogs, no? So, makaingon tag, um, it's, it's, ang karon panahon na, depende ba, even if imong vlog, nindot kay content, but it's basically how you make it. Like, na baka i-add nga mga videos before your talk, or imong vlog, puro rin yun na talking, magkapoy kay paminawon. So, it's your creativity that really matters. Butangan baro ni mong music, na, na abarong kay mga funny nga mga memes, ipamutang. Mm. Try to look at vlogs sa kanin mga top sa YouTube, like Alex Gonzaga, for example. What makes her click, or what makes her tick in the YouTube world? Naagit siguro is something in her nga nakaabot siya 10 million subscribers. Or for example, kanay mga local vloggers in Cebu, on sa may ilang ways. It's not just the content, but it's how they make it. And they put into creativity in their work. Critical, how to evaluate. This time, we use reasoning skills to question, to analyze, to scrutinize, and evaluate digital content, tools, and applications knowing how to search effectively, being able to distinguish credible sources from less credible ones. Meaning, Mom, according to my research, they even can research in Dai. Wikipedia. Uy, some research papers and conferences and even publications do not accept Wikipedia as your source. Kaya naman, I'm not saying bakti ang Wikipedia. Hanindot kay ang Wikipedia. In fact, ako anak dito Wikipedia. But sometimes, you need to dig deeper and look into other other sources, not just Wikipedia. Kaya usahin mo sa Wikipedia, editable ba na siya. Anyone can can share their thoughts there. Diba? So, kana na ang more credible, mangita kag mga sites that are about research journals, mga publications, so, you know how to evaluate the information that you are getting. And lastly, how to participate. So, having the knowledge and ability to use digital environments to self-organize and to be part of a movement bigger than ourselves. So, for example, um, na ay mga call for help. 
kana mga hashtag kana ipa ipa hashtag nila mga donations so this is the part where we also act no nga uh, send via GCash for example simbako simbako lang na yung mga discuss siya nga mga katong pareha atong sanaga nga natabunan ang mga naay barangay dito nga naguho di ba there was I think that was two years ago nga murag ni guho ang ang lupa dito and then natabunan na the donate ta oi donate so how do you donate wala man ko ikanang time mo adto jud ko dito mamalit ko mga lugaw etc ako ihatag dito digital world use the digital world so na adeng ka dihay mga na abaron dihay mag hashtag tabang tabang late at tabang naga mga yun ana so mo appeal ka dito you become participative and that is your civic role so mo mo adeng ka dito sa imong kwarta how do you send money gcash or mag send ka bank to bank transfer mamula man ko gcash mo na siya part sa digital literacy have one no but tell me that mom learn about it that can get tutorials in in the internet kay nga no karong panahon na Uh, maka-help yun ba yan nga we don't have the physical cash with us but mura bag electronic cash na lang bitaw mag-transfer ko sa imong GCash account so without you going to the bank lining up in the ATM kuwan lang siya tuplok-tuplok na lang ka and then the money is already transferred it's wired already okay why do we need to learn this kung kamada mananay uy nga naman ni uy naapil man ni namo diri uy it is because teachers are the forefront of the edu- educative process may ngayon tanong of educating the students on how to be responsible in the virtual environment remember that every time we send emails register on a forum post on social media tag someone else post sa may, may tabo na to ana We are actually living behind digital trails and digital footprints. Therefore, let us remain cognizant to the consequences of our actions to the rest of the digital citizens out there. So, unsa gyud ay imong mabutang no click. Mo siya yung think before you click, no? Kaya ano man? mo mo comment ta kadiha nya wa na nabasa na yung comment ikolo sayop man dito kung giingon oy ako i-erase o da erase to ni mo pero na nay mga tawo nga naka screenshot sa imong gisulti na nay mga tawo nga nag nag na, na, naiubos sa imong mga comments so mo na siya yung mga digital literate no kada dili pataka bitog butang butang dayon din ha ba nya mag rant dayon sa Facebook or sa maning si inyo oy or sa maning si it si ti oy college of teacher education wala man mo yung mga kuan na Hello, oi. Nakana yung ko. So many mga kind of students. They are not digital literate. Ngano man? We don't post something that will hurt others, that might embarrass others. No, we have to be reflective in our posts. Kaya ngano man? Of course, ah, uh, dili kita magpataka. Kaya we are teachers and we have to be responsible of our action. So going back lang to that premise and our responsibility of our action ba. Um, na ako yung na-attendan nga seminar long, long time ago when I was still a principal. Nga. Na ay a way to check, no? Sa imuhang morag history. Makita mo yun ito history of the websites that you have visited. Na ara kayo na ito yung unsa ito yung nakalimut na nag sa details unsa ito pag-check, no? For example, makita ang yun ng website nga imuhang gi visit or even videos nga imuhang gi watch. And mind you, You are a cyber citizen, meaning you belong to the cyber world. Once you you look into something in Google, you look into something in Facebook, you look something into into um, YouTube. Mga inana, you are living with you digital. We call that digital footprints or digital trails. Nagbilin ka sa imuhang parts sa imong self. Oy, ni visit mga isip kung ano nga website o. Nga, kapait na lang unitan ang mga pornographic. Simba ko, simba ko in town. Di palayo. Nga, teacher, no? Nagtan out ang mga, mga batik ay yung mga content. And then, nakita sa student. Kaya ang student, digital native ka ayo May kayo mo kuti-kuti sa computer. Pak, nakita na niya si sir. Hala, eh, si ma'am. Mo manigip pa na na ni sir o ni ma'am. Uy, uy, kabati. No? So, we have to be responsible. Make sure you leave 
digital trails, digital footprints, and a whole sum set in town. This is a checklist that can help us in evaluating the legitimacy and credibility of the sites and information. Diba, I mentioned to you nga, dili lang, Wikipedia, uy, unsa pa man jude ilain, tanaw na to no, we evaluate, we become critical by looking into first. Is the author qualified? Kisa may the author ani nga, nga article, sometimes mutanaw ta. Did you spot any conflict of interest? Did you bring nga? Usay ang mga vlogs ay mga conflict of interest. Mo share sila something because they advertise something. So, usay makaingkong lao eh di mani truthful yahang mga story yao. Okay, tungod blang kani advertise siya og something. Is the website up to date? Sa hay imong source of information 2012, 2000, o 2021 in town taron. Three years and Siguro even up to five years behind us, pwede pa. Pero 2021 ta, dapat ang atong sources, for example, mag-research na ka ng mga 2015 up, no, 16, 17. Pero to apos 1998, 1997, statistics will show. Uy, nausap na ng statistika. Okay, karaan na kaayo na. Mo pa yung pagkataon ninyo, Ana, no? So, are the goals of the website clear? Number five, are you familiar with how the URL looks like? No? Is contact information available? Is the website biased? Number eight, was the material prepared by a reliable person or organization? Does it contain a contact us link? Namun ay no contact us. Is it a site easy to navigate? Number 11, can useful information be retrieved quickly? Is the site free? Usahay ka ng Sage Publication and others. Usahay mo bayad ta, no? And then, is the site Uh, fee based or kada click ni mo bayad baka or free lang yung chatanan or is a site ad free okay so let's delve into cyber citizenship kay kitang tanan cyber citizens man ta because we are using the cyber world now cyber citizenship entails taking responsibility for one's role in cyberspace the online world of computer networks and of the internet The role include, but not limited to, using respectful and kind language, treating others the way one wants to be treated, not sharing private information, not plagiarizing or stealing from the web without proper referencing and citation, and following security measures at all times. It is also important to know the impact of the cyberbullying Gabi big impact na naman gani case karon no nga gipangkiha tungod sa cyberbullying. Phishing kana mang magpataka kag kanang oral defamation ba no? Farming and pop-ups. Anyone can be a victim of emotional scaring, hadlukon ka, i eh, mga kana na mga blackmailing or fake companies trying to get private information of being re redirected to phony websites or ads or messages that pop up while surfing the web. These could not have happened if all digital citizens adhere to cyber protocols. Consequently, it is necessary that we know how to safeguard our privacy by being critical when posting, when uploading, when downloading, or copying any piece of information in and from the website. So it is also important to know the impact of cyberbullying. So, grabe na siya o ka na ang kung ano, um, impact din ang cyberbullying. Kaya nga, no, pwede ta makiha na. To refrain from assess, uh, accessing from bogus sites or from getting counterfeited data, it is advisable that we exercise careful judgment about the information that we have before us. In most cases, the URL will reveal if the site is a personal site or one hosted by an education, government, non-profit, or commercial entity. Common credible URLs include .gov, .edu, .org, .biz, .com, .net. Kaya naman yun, Ana, makainyong ta, they are legitimate nga uh, owned by the government, by an educational sector, Or business, na the name of the author organization should appear on the home page. A contact us link also provides an additional background information like email address and even telephone number and even Facebook. Karo na nagi mga Facebook names. It is also important to know whether the information original or a collection of links with resources cited clearly. 
So, when the site is easy to navigate, no? um, links to other pages in the site should be easy to see and clearly identified. As a rule, you should be able to get what you need in fewer clicks. Pages should be visually attractive, but not cluttered. So, examine also the terms of use before deciding to sign for an account. There are also notices indicating that the site has been checked or or for accessibility. Take notice of advertising. Do not easily be influenced by ads. In sites with ads are permi uh, permissible, make sure that ad content is appropriate for your students. Along with the knowledge of cyber protocol is the understanding how can digital tools aid in teaching and learning. So Finlay in 2012 identified several of the many online tools that can be used for educational purposes. So, kani siya, um, nangita ko uh, kanang site nga or, or, or research nga later than 2012. But, kani mo lang, medyo kompleto, no? Si, si Finlay. So, that's why I use that. No? Kaan kayo no? kanang defensive case, madam. Anyway, multimodal text, news items, photos, pictogram, etc. So, these are Digital tools nga makatabang gid nato sa makaron I am using uh, Kindmaster I am using recording so I am using these kading nga mga tools in my teaching so these are aids in my teaching okay so oy na adete asynchronous task so you are going to come up with a flow chart of the steps to undertake in promoting the use of digital tools in teaching and learning Provide a two to three paragraph explanation on the process flow and how you will inculcate digital citizenship among your students. Okay, diba? Kita as teachers nag learn naman taani. So hopefully by the end of the semester, we are already digitally literate. So kita, how do we inculcate our students? Come up with a flowchart on that, especially in using digital tools. Naasa ni na sa inyong Google Classroom. So I think I will end this recorded lecture with this slide. And this is to reiterate further that every time we send emails, we register on a forum, we post on social media, or we are tagged or even mentioned by someone else, or we can tag others, we visit websites, and etc. No? We are leaving digital trails and digital footprints. Therefore, let us remain cognizant of the consequences of our actions to the rest of the digital citizens out there. So that ends our digital literacy lecture. I am uploading this um, PowerPoint and even this video in our Google Classroom so you can just repeat it and maybe um, look into it some more dig deeper into other um, studies that have something to do with digital literacy so ang bottom line in any class is because we are cyber citizens because we are now in the digital world no we are using technology being digital uh, being digitally literate is a must it is a requirement for teachers so that we can pass this skill to our students. Kay gone are the days when we say, Ay, aturo ko sa kuan ma'am. Uy, kanang kinaraan lang yung kung ways. That cannot anymore be acceptable. Kaya nga naman, nothing in this world, good kuno, no? There is no permanent thing in this world except for change. And when there is change, we need to adapt. How do we adapt? Be flexible. How do we become flexible? Pareha na ng water. Kita mamos tubig, no? Wala mo na usap. Tanawa, unsay sudlanan sa tubig. Maura po na ihang ma-form. Meaning to say, we we fit ourselves in the context where we are. So we are now in the 21st century. We are using computers, we're using internet. Then might as well embrace its beauty and the consequences. But prior to looking into the consequences, we look into how to avoid these consequences by becoming digitally literate. Okay, so please visit our Google Classroom. I have already uploaded their tasks related to Unit 5, which is digital literacy, the deadlines there as well. Keep posted. I will give you, uh, I will give announcements in our GC. 
Okay, goodbye everyone. And please do the asynchronous tasks. It's all in the Google Classroom.